welcome to another captivating episode of Live It Up. Get ready to embark on a journey into the world of creativity and artistic expression as we shine the spotlight on the remarkable talent of Ehinomen Okeki, a visionary collage artist. In this episode, we delve into the captivating world of collage art, where Okeki masterfully combines various elements to create thought-provoking and visually stunning pieces. From his unique approach to storytelling to his meticulous attention to detail, he pushes the boundaries of imagination and invites us to see the world through his artistic lens. Join us as we explore the inspiration behind his mesmerizing works, uncover the techniques he employs to bring his visions to life, and gain insight into the powerful messages he conveys through his art. My name is Ehino Meokweki. I'm a contemporary artist. This is my Live It Up section with Hip TV. Basically, my style is called collage. Sometimes I do mixed media, but my collections at the moment are more of collages. I think that we are all artists. It's the process and the medium is the same way um, a musician is telling his stories, an actor is telling his own story as well. For me as an artist, I tell my own story using the medium called collage. I piece, put together pieces of paper um, to tell stories. It could be stories from my past, stories from happenings in the society, relationship issues, political issues, and what have you. I think that there are a lot of opportunities for emerging artists because of the work that has been done by previous artists. Right now, there's a lot of spotlight for the kind of art done in Nigeria and by Nigerian artists and even widely spread African artists in general. But I think that there is so much light or spotlight on the Nigerian artists at the moment. Collage is not so popular, but it is known because um, people like Picasso did collage and some older artists as well. And there are a couple of Nigerian artists. I have a few friends who do the same style called collage, but I mean, the whole process and style and uh, eventually the output is quite different, but it's called collage. Some get to add a bit of splashes of paint and all of that just to make it mixed media. But mine for now, for all of the series I've worked on so far, I've done just collages. I mean, I do mixed media as well, but I've just stuck to working on collages for now because I think that there is an untold story for me. I grew up having a lot of newspapers at home, newspapers, magazines, and those days we have um, ovation magazines and all of that, fashion magazines. And I would always look at these magazines and I was very intrigued and I wanted to, you know, be part of those kind of images. So I would collect those images. I felt like they were heroic. You know, I would collect those images and piece them together just to tell my story. So growing up, I really didn't know it was a form of art because I wasn't exposed to that kind of art. I was used to paintings and all of that. My uncle, who is a renowned artist, Victor Ekamenor, told me about, showed me more about collages and told me um, that I could actually start doing collages as an art. So um, I started in 2016, I began to piece all of these images together. At this point, I began to source images from the internet, those images that could tell the same stories that I envisioned and that I saw when I was growing up. So my whole process involves me, you know, first I have to have a story in my head. So when I have my story, I get to look for images, collect images that can tell these stories properly. And I first compose them digitally in my computer. From there, I separate it again and print them out and begin to cut them and paste physically to form physical collages. I think that art for every artist looks simple when you have the output, but the whole process involves a lot of research, it involves a lot of um, work, trying to source materials, trying to test materials as well. Um, I mean, before I came up with this style, I had to do a lot of testing from testing my adhesive, my glue, to testing the kind of paper and all of that, just so that, I mean, there's long longevity in my material, you know. 
it takes a lot of work, but at the end of the day, it's worth it. It's the joy of an artist is to go through all of this process and you see that you better that idea and you see the full work in front of you. I think it's a beautiful feeling. I don't know that I'm able to put a specific time to it, but from the process of research to me thinking, I call it my ideation process, um, from there to me piecing everything together on my computer, it depends on what stories I'm telling. If I'm working on a series or I'm just doing a one-off, it could take days, it could take weeks, so it depends. Yeah, I think that for me, inspiration comes by from anything. It could be me having a conversation with you and it strikes me, it reminds me of something from my past. So right now, I'm really focusing on telling stories from my childhood, nostalgic stories and all of that. So if there's anything I see in my daily activity or my daily living, I take note of it. And if it strikes, strikes me and reminds me of anything of my past, I just remember that and want to tell that story over again. In this time where modernism is plaguing our culture. I really want my work to be a reminder of where we come from, our choice from as Nigerians and as Africans. Art generally is a craft that has been taught in school. So you can teach people how to paint, you can teach people. I think that a lot of people did collage whilst growing up, whilst in school, maybe primary school or some, I think it was in primary school, where you, you piece paper together and all of that. I did that in secondary school, but I really didn't know that it was something that I could call commercial art. So yes, anybody can jump on, you know, painting anything and all of that, but I think that the idea comes, if you don't have it, probably you don't. Maybe there are ways you can go around it in terms of praying for an idea or something, but beyond, I think for me it's beyond the medium is beyond knowing how to even use a medium, whether you call it painting or collage, it's more on you having the idea to sell. Because for me, I'm selling stories, so the times that I don't have a story to sell, I'm probably just thinking, what is that thing I can remember from childhood? So I would say that it's beyond the style you use, it's beyond art, it's beyond the medium, it's really in the thinking and in the story you have to tell. It depends on um, how an artist wants to price his work. It also depends on how long you've been an artist, how long you've been in the game for. Um, so most times we get to fix our prizes. Most times our curators get to fix our prizes. So it all depends. But I think that it's a lucrative venture. But for every artist really, they really don't want to look at the lucrative side of it. It's fine, you want to do stuff that can put food on your table, but it's it's more than that for us, it's us wanting to be out there, wanting to tell our stories and all of that. Okay, so I think that the challenges I face as an artist is the same challenge we all face as Nigerians, from where you, you know, the materials you get for a certain price yesterday, you get it for a higher price the next day. Sometimes it has to even do with light. You have to go look for foyer and all of that. So I think that the challenge of an artist is Kind of the same challenge every Nigerian face. Welcome back guys, this is still my leave it up section with Hip TV. I'll walk you through the process of how I get my work done. So let's go. Okay, so um, the same tool you need for a collage, you need your knife. Some people prefer to use knives, some people, people, people prefer to use scissors. I have both anyways. But I work better with my knife. You need, um, what else do you need? You need your glue. I have my roller, so I use this to roll on top of my work. Whilst when I have glue beneath it, I just roll it through just so that it stays properly. You know, so now I'm just trying to cut out my pieces for composition. I collect them from the internet, but I get to manipulate them. I get to manipulate them. So if you see a face, for instance, it's not the original face. I probably distorted the face, the eyes, the mouth, and all of that, just so that I can have rights to the images. I use Photoshop. So I get to compose it digitally first. Who understands my style and the kind of prints I need. So I usually use like a quality print and I have like my choice of paper as well. 
I think that for me, I've just gotten to this point where even my materials are beginning to allow me play with it, you know. So art opens up at some point, you know. The more you work with a certain material, the material begins to open up to you and speak to you. So um, I'm now very discerning that I hear the voice of my materials at this point. They are just telling me to cut carefully <laughs> so I don't hurt them. So this particular piece, I named it Ogogo because um, it means joy. Some people would say happiness, but it means joy. And I'm from Edo. So in most of the Edo, Edo, Edo languages, so we have different languages in Edo. Though I grew up in Benin, but I'm Isha. So Ogogo is joy in Benin and is joy in Isha at the same time. So this, I, I got this inspiration one time where we, it was my grand, grandmom's burial in the village. So I noticed that whilst the women were cooking, the children, the, I mean the children who were bred in the village, they came and they were dancing. They were so happy, you know. So one of the days I just remember that story. I'm like, okay, let me create that again. So I could still remember, I had like the vivid picture in my head how these kids raised their hands and they were happy just because they were they were preparing food you know and for me it was something to behold because it wasn't something i got used to growing up you know i never remembered dancing or anything because my mom was cooking but i know that it's a story that every nigerian relates to you know for some of some people whilst growing up i heard some people it's when their mom is preparing rice you see them happy and jumpy and all of that. So that was the story I was trying to create. But I mean, you can relate it to every other thing in life. When you're happy, you have your hands up and all of that. So I try to create relatable stories. The part where they tell you if a fashion designer makes mistakes is part of the fashion. That's why they give us bad clothes. Not all of them anyways. Um, for me, I, I think that yes, initially when I started, I found out that there were times where I will mistakenly just move into my work, move my knife into my work. Beyond art, I have like a background in design. So as a designer, most times you want everything to be perfect. So what I started doing from then was I wouldn't go ahead to use that work. So when I'm print, at that time when I, I was printing my works, I would print more than one. So if I made mistakes with one, you know, I'll just start all over again with another one. But right now, I take the risk of just printing one because I think that I don't get to make those mistakes anymore. Okay, so when I'm done with cutting, uh, the next thing is to glue. So I use a white glue. It's normal school glue that kids use in school. Um, so I just glue the back of my cutout. But before I do that, I get to put it on my paper just to know how what my composition is going to look like and feel like before applying the glue. Okay, so my collage is ready. Um, so this is what it looks like after you apply your glue. So this one was from this same series of Google. And we have these two from the series of Google. Then um, I have some other works. Okay, I think this two is from the same series. Then I have this, I call this one Letter from Oversea. The whole story behind this is interesting. It tells, it's about how, you know, growing up in Benin, um, at that time when I grew up, they, we had a lot of um, people in Benin going outside the country. And at that time, it wasn't them even flying out. They were going through the desert and all of that. So it, for, for, at some point, you don't get to hear from them for a very long time. And their families get to be very worried and all of that. There's no form of communication. Sometimes it spans from one to sometimes 10 years. So this is a story of a mother that eventually heard from her son after 10 years. And she got to read a letter from her son and she was happy. So I titled this one Letter from Overseas. Then we have this one, Selfie Girls. It's, a series, it's from my series called Selfie Girls. It's a series of five. We have this and um, I also have this one, 
from my series Together Forever. One of my first works I did, I, I, I did the photography myself. I went to Benin and I took photographs. I, mean, I, took, I, had, I had to take permission paid for my models and all of that from their mom. So yes, there are times that I do the photography myself. You know, but I think that beyond taking, that's where the work really gets to come in for me. Beyond taking these photographs is for me to look for images that are compelling enough, you know, collect all of these images and get to distort them to tell these same stories, you know, and that's where I find really interesting. Thank you for watching my Live It Up section with Hip TV. You can follow me on Instagram at sa underscore ehi, sa underscore ehi. Thank you.